Well, hello YouTubers and welcome back to another episode of this old planner. Um, today we're going to take a look at some of the uh, gear train of the feed system and then also uh, the in-feed rollers or the idler rollers from the in-feed table. Um, today's episode is going to deal with failure analysis and um, you know, there's there's a few issues here with these parts that uh, we've got to take a look at. Um, one of the things I was thinking is that uh, with this um, idler roll, um, making new bearing blocks, um, and the reason being for it, um, the slot that these grooves, or the blocks ride in, um, I thought initially was ta ta <coughs> tapered. As it turns out, it's not. And uh, so the blocks themselves have it tapered to them. <coughs> and um, there, there's a bunch of goop in the, in the slot now that uh, makes it act like a shim. So um, when I clean these grooves out and then go to put the block back in as it is, I was going to bush it first. I got a nice piece of uh, bronze here that I was going to make bushings out of. Being how the roller itself uh, turned it down to a nominal 19 on the uh, on the stub end and uh, got the reamer for it. And as it turns out, um, this block here. This is the block that goes on the end of the, let me back you up here and then I'll show you this is going to be a little easier. Okay, here's the roller and this is the, the bottom side of the, uh, the feed table or the, uh, the bed plate and uh, right here and here are where these bearing blocks ride in. Then there's the uh, grease irks. They go on here like this. This is a cup type that uh, you fill up with grease and it forces the grease up through the tube into the bearing. <coughs> and this also doubles as a uh, height adjustment for the roller, how it protrudes out of the, out of the bottom of the bed plate. But now if I take this block and turn it upside down, it just falls right in. And there's about a millimeter and a half of taper from the top here. Let me get back in frame here, sorry about that. Um, up here there's a millimeter and a half difference to the bottom. And uh, same thing with this one over here. This one has been ground off. Somebody took a just a grinder to it and uh, ground it off and uh, when you stick it in there this one has a tendency of course again with the goop in here it won't fall all the way through so I'm going to have to clean that out and get that all uh, cleaned out. So what I'm going to do is, is make new bearing uh, blocks here out of this piece of string cast um, on the mill i uh, got enough here for two of them. i got enough for six altogether, but um, that chunk I just cut off to make two of them. So let me turn around here and show you the, um, here's the gears laying all stacked up here. Now, the gears themselves are all right. There's nothing wrong with uh, the holes in them. They, they look a little rough, but with a hundred year old machine that's kind of be expected, but um, let me switch back over here. We have these pins. These pins are what the gears were mounted on, on the side of the machine. And um, let me raise the camera just a tad. Okay. So these gears were mounted on the, on these uh, pins. Now, the, pit, the part of the pin that was inserted in the machine is still, uh, it's still a virgin uh, surface and it hasn't had any wear on it, no appreciable wear. So when you take the gear and stick it on there, there's no slop to it. It's, it's still a nice slip fit and uh, you know, it, it shows the original, that the, the, the bore of the gear is still okay. 
Now, as you slip it out towards the end of the gear where it rode, there's, let's see if we can, you can hear it rattling. Now, again, failure analysis. Let me zoom this in here, Let's see if I can. Oops, it's zooming again. Get it in here. Now as you look at the pin, you can see there's a, a definite wear pattern. Now you can see by the wear pattern on here that uh, <clears throat> the grease wasn't being distributed well enough all the way around the, the bore <clears throat> or the, the perimeter of the, of the pin. And the rotation was such that it would rotate this way and pull the grease down in here so there's very little wear until you get about a halfway around and then the uh, bottom side here is really just worn bad. So what we're going to do on the new pins, I've got uh, material here for making new pins, is we're going to drill this completely through, through and through, and uh, make this grease groove on both sides so that way uh, you get a better grease distribution and um, <clears throat> prolong the, the life of the gear somewhat. Now, one of the gears I, I managed to, to bung up and break a tooth off, so I'm not sure if I'm going to bore that old gear out um, and um, make a new one or what I'm going to do there. <clears throat> now, I'm not sure if this is an M5 gear or an M5.5. I got to look up the formulas in the book at home to see what uh, <clears throat> what what module uh, <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> to see what uh, what module this is they use module uh, ratings here in Europe and I'm sure this is one of those type of gears as well um, so I'm gonna have to figure out and they're all the same they all mesh fairly well at some point in time later on down the road when I get this machine working I'm gonna um, make a set of helical gears for it and replace these uh, these uh, regular just straight straight tooth gears so after uh, checking the book um, this uh, this one here get the title up there to you got the formula for Figuring out the spacing on the teeth here, and this turns out to be an M6 uh, tooth spacing. And uh, so we'll uh, get a set of cutters and probably make the new center gear. Um, well, the one that uh, got busted, this one here is looking pretty worn too along the teeth. But like I said, they're going to get uh, this machine's going to get a set of helical gears uh, somewhere down the line. I'm just going to throw it back together to get it working, you know, with these gears as it is. But uh, these pins are definitely going to get made new. And then uh, one of the things I was thinking about, you know, we always get hung up on certain tools that you got to have for a job. And uh, last year in eBay there's oh, quite a few of these radius ended slotting, uh, slotting mills that uh, I was seeing on eBay floating around and I, you know, eh, I don't really need one just yet and uh, now I'm regretting it, wishing I'd bought one. So what I'm going to do, I've got a, uh, uh, a small M08 or something like that, 0 0.8 uh, module cutter gear, or gear cutter, and I'm just going to use that to cut the slots on both sides of these pins. And like I said, drill through and through and then that way it will pick up grease on both sides because uh, the circumference of this uh, 30 millimeter pin uh, is just a little bit too much for the little film of grease that you get in here. So, I mean, granted, as, as the gear wears with age, it will float on more and more grease as it's forced into the uh, into the gap between the pin and the, and the, and the gear. But still, um, it doesn't prevent the wear on the pin itself. So, and then of course the oblong wear, you're going to get and then once the pin wears then of course the teeth start chattering and uh, you get quite a nasty wear pattern. I'll take a few pictures and show uh, 
at the end of the video what this thing is looking like up close so that way you guys can get a better idea of it. So anyway, that uh, wraps up today's uh, episode of this old planner, the failure analysis of the gear train. Um, hopefully you guys got something out of that. And uh, well, if there's any thoughts or uh, questions, by all means, leave them in the comment section below. Uh, I do thank the new subscribers that have come on board and I uh, hope to see you guys all again soon.